Another type of intermolecular force that is a special type of dipole-dipole interaction is called hydrogen bonding. Now hydrogen bonding is a little bit of a misnomer because it is not an actual chemical bond. It is just a very, very strong um, dipole-dipole interaction. So they are stronger than dipole-dipole or dispersion. And substances that can hydrogen bond will have higher boiling points and melting points than similar substances. But they're not nearly as strong as a chemical bond. They're about 2 to 5% of a covalent bond. So just be careful. Even though it's called a hydrogen bond, it is not a physical sharing of electrons. It is a stronger dipole-dipole force. Now, how do we know if something does hydrogen bond? Well, we know if something hydrogen bonds because it is a hydrogen that is directly connected to a fluorine, an oxygen, or a nitrogen. So I like to refer to this as hydrogen on the phone. Helps me to remember which elements it is that hydrogen has to be directly connected to. Um, and again, this is um, an attraction for the partial negative part of a molecule towards the partial positive of another molecule. One of the most common substances that you'll interact with that hydrogen bonds is water. And these hydrogen bonds are what make water a liquid at room temperature. Water has an extremely small molar mass for a substance that is a liquid at room temperature. It only weighs 18 grams per mole, but because of these additional interactions with our hydrogen bonds that are very strong, it makes the boiling point that much higher. Another type of molecule is ethanol. And again, we're looking for that hydrogen that is directly connected to an oxygen. In our ethanol, again, it's oxygen and hydrogen directly connected to each other that forms that hydrogen bond. So the attraction for the partial negative of the oxygen towards the partial positive of our hydrogen is what makes these hydrogen bonds. Now water and ethanol are very miscible because they have similar forces that are happening. So because they both hydrogen bond, they will mix together. In fact, they mix together so well that we actually have a very difficult time making a pure ethanol because it's hard to remove all of the water out of the ethanol. Let's look at the effect of hydrogen bonding on our boiling point. We have two different molecules that are isomers. Isomers are the same chemical formula, but the atoms are arranged in a different order. So ethanol, the oxygen is directly connected to the hydrogen. In dimethyl ether, the oxygen sits between two carbons. So we have hydrogen bonding in our ethanol and dipole-dipole forces as the strongest in our dimethyl ether. And you'll notice that our boiling points are significantly different. So dimethyl ether is a gas at room temperature. We know that because room temperature is around 23 degrees Celsius. So if we have a boiling point that is lower than that, it means it's a gas at room temperature. If we have a boiling point that is higher than 23, that means that it's a liquid. So ethanol, because of its hydrogen bonding, is a liquid at room temperature and dimethyl ether is a gas.
Decide which one of these compounds is a liquid at room temperature. The others are gases. Which one do you think it is and why? Well, let's look at the attachment of our atoms. So for formaldehyde, we have dispersion forces. We also have dipole-dipole because we have a partial negative on the oxygen. The electrons are more drawn towards the oxygen than they are the rest of the molecule. So we have dipole-dipole. We do not have hydrogen bonding because that oxygen is connected to carbon, not a hydrogen. So our strongest force in this case is dipole-dipole. Let's look at fluoromethane. Okay, so everything, no matter what it is, has dispersion forces. We do have dipole-dipole because that fluorine is going to be partial negative. The rest of the molecule is going to be partial positive. Now our fluorine is not directly connected to hydrogen, so we do not have hydrogen bonding. Remember, hydrogen bonding is hydrogen on the phone, directly connected to fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen. Let's look at hydrogen peroxide. So we do have dispersion. Everything has dispersion. We have dipole-dipole. We also have hydrogen directly connected to oxygen. So in this case, we have hydrogen bonding. Because we have all three forces, this one is going to be a liquid. The other two are gases. It's your turn to practice. Choose the substance in each pair that is a liquid at room temperature. Pause the video to determine which one you believe it is. If we look at A, the order that the atoms are attached or to each other is the order that they're written. So CH3 means there's three hydrogens attached to the carbon. Then we have an oxygen that is attached to hydrogen. Here, because we have oxygen directly attached to hydrogen, there is hydrogen bonding. Let's look at our other example. So CH3 means we have three hydrogens attached to the carbon. We have another carbon with a hydrogen attached and then two fluorine. So the order that they're written is the way that they're attached. So when you write carbon first, then what it's attached to comes next, carbon and what it's attached to. So in this case, our hydrogen is not attached to the fluorine, and so there is no hydrogen bonding. So for A, our methanol, CH3OH, would be the liquid. If we look at B, when we write this out, there is three hydrogens attached to the carbon. Next comes our oxygen. Our oxygen is attached to the carbon that has two hydrogens. And then we have another carbon with three hydrogens. And so our oxygen is connected to two carbons here. There is no hydrogen bonding. If we look at our next example, carbon with three hydrogens, carbon with two hydrogens, because we know carbon wants to make four bonds, carbon with two hydrogens. And then we have nitrogen with two hydrogens because nitrogen only wants to make three bonds with a lone pair. So now we do have nitrogen directly connected to hydrogen, this will hydrogen bond. And so in this case, 
the amine, the NH2, is going to be our liquid. There is another type of interaction called ion dipole forces. This is what happens when the electronegativity becomes so great that we form ionic compounds. When they dissolve in water, that uh, positive or negative charge is attracted to either the partial positive of the hydrogen, if it's a negative charge, or the partial negative of the oxygen if it's a positive charge. So the strength of this interaction is one of the things that helps to determine the solubility of our ionic compounds in water. The more that they're attracted, the more soluble the ionic compound is going to be. Okay, so choose the substance in each pair that's more soluble in water. Pause the video to determine your answer. Things that are more soluble are going to have similar intermolecular forces to the substance we're talking about. So water has dispersion. It has dipole-dipole. And it has hydrogen bonding. So the thing that is going to be more soluble is going to have a greater magnitude of either dipole forces or hydrogen bonding. So let's look at our examples. We have methanol and we have our CH3, CH with two fluorines attached to that carbon. So that is not directly attached to hydrogen. There is no hydrogen bonding like we see in our methanol. Oxygen directly connected to hydrogen. And so we have hydrogen bonding. So our methanol would be more soluble in water. If we look at pentane, so five carbons is pentane, carbon chain. We've got CH3Cl. This is going to have dispersion forces. Our pentane is only dispersion. It's nonpolar. Our chloromethane has dispersion. It also is polar because of the chlorine, so it has dipole. It does not have hydrogen bonding, but they, these are, because it has dipole forces, it's going to be more similar to water out of the two options, and so this will be more soluble. Now, if we look at all of our interactions that we've talked about, in general, from weakest to strongest, It goes dispersion, dipole-dipole, hydrogen bonding, and then ion-dipole in increasing strength. Now we do want to put a little caveat on this because when we get to very, very large molecules, the dispersion forces do become pretty strong. So if you think about um, motor oil, those are nonpolar molecules, but because they're so large, they have a lot of forces that interact, and that's what makes it such a thick, goopy liquid. But in general, dispersion is the weakest. Ion dipole is the strongest. Dispersion can be any molecule. Dipole-dipole must be polar. Hydrogen bonding, the H has to be on the phone. An ion dipole, we have an ion surrounded by uh, polar compounds.